Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm with uh, Professor Brian C.J. Moore from University of Cambridge. Uh, Brian, thank you very much for joining me. And yeah. um, thank you. And you're going to present in the in sixth international conference on hyperacusis and misophonia, which is planned for 1st and 2nd of July uh, this year at Birkbeck College, University of London. So tell us a little bit about your uh, presentation and what is it that uh, people need to look for? Okay, well, this <clears throat> paper is about um, people with misophonia who may turn up among patients who appear seeking help for tinnitus or hyperacusis. Um, so uh, misophonia is not as well known a term as hyperacusis or tinnitus. So many uh, people may get referred to a, a tinnitus clinic or a hyper tinnitus and hyperacusis clinic, but their main problem is actually misophonia, which is a dislike of certain specific sounds, very specific sounds, usually man-made or animal-made sounds like lip smacking or, or clicking or, or sounds produced with the tongue or the teeth. And misophonia may require a different kind of treatment from a different kind of therapy from tinnitus or hyperacusis. It may need to be managed in a slightly different way. So it's important to identify those cases. Um, and what the main focus of the paper was on looking at the audiological characteristics of people with misophonia and also their, their responses to questionnaires about the impact of tinnitus uh, hyperacusis, uh, anxiety and depression, to see if any of these factors are predictive of misophonia and could be used to alert the clinician and say, look, this person has misophonia, it's not hyperacusis, it's their primary problem. And then they need to be treated appropriately and the therapy needs to be tailored appropriately um, based on that uh, identification of misophonia. Exactly. I'm glad that you mentioned that about the referral, because uh, it is absolutely true that many uh, people who are referred to audiology departments, at least, um, the, on the referral letter, you can't see like the term misophonia, and they are saying sensitivity to sound, or they're complaining of certain sounds, and when they are triaged into usually tinnitus uh, clinics, it is important that to basically investigate that to see whether it is actually what kind of uh, sound sensitivities is it misophonia, hyperacusis, or sometimes a general noise sensitivity can also play yes, yes, um, a role uh, into all of these. And, and I agree that it is uh, in terms of the treatment, uh, people who have misophonia, the way that the treatment is uh, delivered, and also the skill set of the therapist uh, are slightly different from that of the tinnitus and hyperacusis, at least in the audiological uh, settings. Uh, I'm sure there will be different protocols as well in the psychology uh, clinics for people who have misophonia, and that would be a bit different than perhaps somebody who have OCD or, uh, or anxiety. And uh, so, yeah, I look forward uh, listening to your talk and learn from your results. And uh, thank you very much for joining me in this uh, brief interview. All right, it's been a pleasure.